Hey, my friends, here we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the 19th of June, 2019. 19, 6, 19, as we say the date here in New Zealand, <laughs> or New Zealand, depending on how you pronounce that. Um, here we are. It's Chat with Matt. I think it's episode 24. That's what I tagged this with. I hope I got it right. I might not have. Uh, notorious for losing count, things like that. I have a joke at yoga class. <laughs> we do three repetitions, right? So three times this way, three times that way. And I usually lose count as the teacher before I've got I've worked out. So we're usually laughing when Matt's saying, do, have we done three? <laughs> we done three yet. So um, I'm flat out counting to three, let alone 24. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> true confessions. <laughs> Hi, my name's Matt and I'm a yoga teacher who can't count. Um <clears throat> I'm a lot of other things, right? Hey, Sister Robin G, how are you? <laughs> Mrs. G, Mrs. Matt, Mrs. Matt Man and Robin. Mm. Awesome, just having a lemon juice. I start my day. So here we are. It's chat with Matt. We've got 30 minutes, so that's what we've uh, allocated to shoot the breeze and talk about whatever's coming up. I haven't had a very good look at Facebook yet to see if anyone's written in. I always put a post up about 12 hours. Last night it was only 10 hours because obviously I was up late. I was up late. It was after midnight. Um, to uh, announce this and to give people an option, opportunity to ask questions ahead of time. And so that is what I have done. And that is what available. It is what is available here. And I can read these questions in just a moment. Just decided to refresh my screen to make sure I am actually here live on the right page. Yes, there I am. It's always good. <laughs> always helps me to relax knowing that I am actually on the right page and I am actually uh, showing up as I've advertised. So Sister Mary has written in from Niagara Falls. Not that she wrote that. I just know that inside information. Matt, can one be relaxed can one be relaxed outwardly but still holding tension inwardly like in the solar plexus oh yes not truly relaxed outside but people can put on a persona of relaxed outside definitely um <clears throat> it just comes down to your awareness really you can think that you're relaxed outside your muscles can be relatively relaxed um but there's still inner tension happening um, and it's true there are very very many aspects of us some people can be quite uh, intellectually or mentally relaxed and yet they're still holding quite a lot of emotional tension for that matter right so stress or you know the lack of relaxation is is a multi-faceted multi-dimensional thing and so you know I never look at whether you're relaxed or stressed. It's not on or off. It's not a binary choice, right? We're all carrying a level of stress and we're all relaxed to some degree. It's just a matter of uh, where we lie on that scale of, you know, relaxed at one end, stressed at the other, quote unquote, right? Where do you draw the line at where you say, oh, I'm relaxed right now or I'm stressed right now? That's just a perception, you see. So someone... Hey, Sister Jeanette, someone can be, you know, holding a certain, if we were to measure the tension in their body, like electrically, the tension in their whole field, how much their mind is active as in the stress response, how much stress is happening in their body. You could go to great lengths to try and put a number on that, a measurement of it. Some people would say with that very same number, if two people have the exact same number of stress indicators in their life, for example, one person might describe themselves as horrendously stressed and the other one might say, oh, no, I'm pretty relaxed, right? It's just a, just a matter of where their perspective lies, which is basically a result of their history, right? If they've got a history of being stressed a lot, then that particular number of stress indicator, which is a hypoth hypothetical sort of analogy I've just dreamt up out of nowhere, um, might be less than what they are used to. And so they say, oh, well, I'm relatively relaxed. They probably don't use the word relative, but they'll put that in there to, to highlight. But they say, I'm relaxed, even though they might be, their body might be in, in quite a bit of fight or flight, but it's less than what they are used to, right? And someone else who generally lives a very calm life, has lived in the country, for example, with very little stress stressors in their life, is experiencing the exactly the same level of stress. And they're in complete overwhelm and potentially having a breakdown with the level of stress that they're feeling because it is above what they are 
able to cope with. So understand that <clears throat> this thing called stress and can one be relaxed is very, very relative and very, very much up to the perception of the viewer, right? Perception of the viewer or the experience or in this case, right? So you're experiencing it. So can one be relaxed outwardly and still be holding tension inwardly? Absolutely, right? And in the solar plexus, definitely. So the solar plexus is our... I'm going to drink this, right? I was just teasing you. I was teasing myself. Um, ah, Robin, homesick. I've got Jaden homesick as well. He had, he had a nasty tummy the night before and now he's got a bit of a fluey thing happening. So Maria's like, you go and see him because Maria's going overseas in like uh, seven days or something, right? She's leaving for leaving for Thailand and then then Vietnam, delivering a ret yoga retreat in Thailand, then going to do a, a recce, a reconnaissance mission on Vietnam for doing a yoga retreat in 2020. So the last thing she wants to do is get the flu before we leave. Um, I will read your question though in a second, but I won't read it right now because otherwise I'll lose track of what I'm talking to Mary about. But it's there and I'll scroll back to it. Hey, Sister Barbara. So, yes, the solar plexus, right? Quite often the solar plexus is... Um, I, I'll be healthy, don't worry. Although I have got a bit of a sore... Th not a sore throat, but a little bit of a stretched throat from last night because I had my light language... My full moon Tuesday night light language uh, down at the yoga center. So I had quite a full room and uh, had to project my voice. And I was in full form. And I'm not saying that from a place of ego. <laughs> but, but let's just say it took quite a while to peel the people off the floor afterwards. <laughs> it took quite a while to get everyone out of the room. Um, like half an hour sort of thing. <laughs> they were out to lunch. Um, or out to tea because it was evening. But anyway, that's another story. Let's get back to the solar plexus and holding tension there inwardly. The solar plexus is quite a, um, a normal place to hold deep level tension, right? The solar plexus is at the center of our being, the center of our energetic being. It's here. It's called the solar for a reason because it's the, the light within us, the bright light, the, the link back to our essential light, if you like, our higher self. Um, and while we do, you know, operate from the heart and higher self has a huge amount of, you know, um, influence through the higher heart and the upper heart, you know, what we call the soul seat. Um, and of course, the third eye and the divine mind. But the energetic center of our being is down here in our upper belly, the solar plexus, right? And so many of us have, you know, our self-confidence, our self-worth is in this area. Many of us who are carrying indoctrination from past lifetime or even earlier this lifetime or both right quite often we've come in with it from past life it's been reinforced in in early life here childhood and beyond um lack of self-worth low self-confidence um we feel it as tension in our in our abdomen right we're nervous in our belly that things are going to go wrong. We have a safety issue in the world because we don't feel worthy on a level to be here and we don't feel safe and confident to stay here safely, right? That we'll be accepted and that we'll stay safe. My glasses are freaking filthy. Must put that on my... I, have to, I pretty much have to write that on my list so I remember to clean my own glasses. Um, but, so the point is, the point is here, yes, generally... The inner tension, the last place it will be in our body, right? The last place to be fully clear of tension will be our solar plexus. Now, most people aren't aware of it, right? So it's just a matter of understanding that it's your awareness of the tension in your solar plexus that is creating the discomfort. And it's not a wrong thing to be aware of it, but now it's just a matter of choosing not to make it wrong that it's there, Mary. Understand that that tension in your solar plexus is there because you've basically been persecuted in past lifetimes and you've been indoctrinated or implanted with the belief that you're not good enough uh, through torturous experiences, most likely, most likely for many of us, many of us, many of you guys who are drawn to my uh, teachings or my facilitations are of this genre of people who have come here onto this planet, held the light very strongly or um, <clears throat> adamantly, held the light very adamantly in times of intense darkness and we've been persecuted for doing so um, and we're carrying the scarring 
the trauma in our field from that uh, service that we provided in other lifetimes. Anyway, so yes, definitely, 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 uh, the inattention can still be there. And while you're allowing yourself to more um, betterly, betterly is probably not the right word, but more more uh, adequately relaxed in your outer world and, and you're feeling more relaxed there, then it becomes more obvious that the tension in your belly is there. So don't make it wrong that there's this duality happening because we've all got it happening to some degree. It's great that you're finding a more outwardly relaxed space. And it's all even good that you're now more aware that you still have tension in your solar plexus. And so now it's just a matter of allowing yourself to relax through the experience of releasing that. And it will be, a, it's a process. It's going to take time, but choose not to make yourself wrong about it and choose not to worry about it because you know, evo evoking mental anxiety about the fact that you're still not relaxed in your solar plexus isn't going to help you relax in your solar plexus, I can assure you. Okay, so can entities hold us back from moving forward? Not really. Not really. They can play a part in it, but can they actually hold us back? No. No, you are more powerful than any entity on this planet or on this in this cosmos. So they can't intrinsically hold us back. They can definitely play a role in holding us back if we allow them to. If we allow them to be stronger than us, if we allow ourselves to be influenced by their ability to influence us, and they do have ability to influence us, no doubt, but it's a matter of um, good night, Jeanette. Have a great sleep, sister. It is late in France. Um, so, but... Um, they can't intrinsically hold us back. If you choose to release the entities, if you choose to move past any in entity interference, then you will move forward, no doubt, right? So they can't intrinsically hold you back. They can be playing a role in in holding us back, but uh, as I said, that's that's up for, you know, up for debate, really. <laughs> you choose, you choose, basically, you choose. So, um, yeah. Entities aren't, aren't nearly as powerful as you might think they are, but the thought that they're powerful is what holds you back. How's that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip on uh, over here. So, Morena Matt. Morena means morning, for those of you who don't know Māori. Uh, homesick, uh, but able to watch is definitely a silver lining. Would love some, G guidance around moving through sickness, specifically cold flu symptoms. Definitely seeing it as an opportunity for release and a call to relaxation and rest, but would love to hear your thoughts. Yes, okay, so flu symptomology is quite often a purification event that's happening physically, right? Quite often, uh, you know, I don't believe, I'm not one uh, to get caught up in the idea that you just have bad luck and, and happen to catch a virus and then you get sick as a consequence. Um, we can see that the viruses are everywhere. Some people get sick, some people don't, right? So viruses and bacterium, germs, quote unquote, are um, scavengers. I'm going to drink, talking, I've got to drink my lemon juice because I don't want to get sick. They're opportunists. Much like the entities we were just talking about with Mary. Quite often, the entities are in someone's field uh, because there's an opportunity there for them to feed off fear. And, and while they're there, much like germs in the body, they also provoke um, uh, feelings, situations, thoughts even, that in induce more fear, right? So that they, you know, start creating the situations that they like to feed from. So... And, and germs do the same. So germs arrive in our body or take hold. They're already in our body, right? Let's face it. There's germs everywhere. We're always been coming into contact with them. But if the situations become ripe for them to start multiplying beyond our immune system's ability to keep them under control, then we quote unquote get sick. They're basically what the conditions that ger the germs need is generally a condition of uh, discordance. So um, inflammation in the body or um, an out of balance in our sugar ratios, all sorts of things, right, that, that basically trigger or pr make the conditions where bacteria or viral uh, life forms in our, in our ecosystem flourish 
beyond the ability for our immune system to keep them under control. Of course, having a, a strong immune system helps us, you know, it gives us a, a, an advantage in this, in this balance game, right? So the stronger our immune system is, the less likely it is we're going to get sick because we can, you know, put out a bigger bushfire, you know, as, in, as, a, as an analogy, right? If the immune system was a fire brigade. Um, so the, the fire can get bigger before it get, runs out of control. And so if we have an, a compromised immune system, then it doesn't take much of a you know bacterial or viral infection to move beyond the ability of the immune system to keep it under control and we have quote unquote meltdown right we can no longer um kill it off faster than it's multiplying and it runs out of control and what happens then is our body has to go into um a bigger a bigger response which involves us having to rest it involves us removing a lot of the crap out of our body that the that the infection was using to sustain itself. So we have a mass purge out of the conditions that made it ripe in the first place for the infection to start running out of control. I'll just scroll down because I know what will happen. Otherwise, I'll miss people uh, adding in. Hey, Sister Patricia Jones, welcome. So I'm talking about uh, getting sick and what it's all about and how it has... Um, Mirrors, mirrors for, for how we deal with a lot of things in life. So now that I've scrolled down, I can't remember the exact question. Can you talk about uh, moving through sickness, specifically cold and flu? Definitely seeing as an opportunity to release and a call for relaxation and rest, but would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so basically once you are sick, the thing to do is to rest and to uh, choose to maintain confidence around the process. So like every purification event, and I was just, uh, I just wrote down, I don't have my journal with me, but I wrote down yesterday morning after my meditation, an interesting um, insight around the difference between transformation and purification is simply the focus, is simply the focus, because transformation is basically a process of purification. The difference between transformation and purification is in purification, we are... Um, focused on what we are releasing. We're focused on what we're getting out of our body. And in transformation, we're still going through exactly the same process of stuff coming out of our body, but we're focused on where we're going. We're focused on what we're choosing. We're focused on the outcome. And so transformation generally works in a spiritual way far more effectively than purification, even though it's exactly the same process. It's just a matter of what we are focused on. What you focus on is what you feed and what you feed grows stronger and what grows stronger you're going to experience. So the pro problem with people who are uh, dedicated to purification is they're always looking for what to purify. They're always looking for the problem. They're always looking for the, for the um, toxins right in their life, whether it's physical, mental or emotional. And where their focus lies is what they are feeding, right? So they're actually they're actually creating the situations for them to stay in cons constant purification mode because they've always already sort of made it their mission to keep purifying themselves. And so if it's your mission to keep purifying yourself, you will keep finding more stuff to purify and you basically never get to the outcome you're desiring. If you're more in line with the idea that I'm here to transform, then you're looking towards what you are moving into, right? And so you are focused on your outcomes and therefore you are much more likely to achieve your outcomes while still going through a process of all of your crap coming up to leave. So when we're going through a cold or a flu or any sort of, of acute sickness illness, right? Which might be something like shingles, for example, which is a similar sort of thing. It's a viral infection running out of control in our body and producing a rather uncomfortable, you know, external situation, which is basically a purification uh, thing, right? It's coming out through our skin, toxins that are in our body coming out through our skin. And we blame the, you know, chickenpox virus on it. But basically the chickenpox virus is just taking advantage of the situation that has arisen in your body, right? The disbalance in your body, there's too much something, acid or whatever, right, in your body, and that virus runs out of control and basically helps your body get all of that shit out. And it comes out through the skin in these nasty pustules, right? Like, so 
don't know how I got to shingles from, from the flu. But it's the same, right? It's the same. We, we just basically getting it out of our body in different ways. So the point is, is to maintain an empowered attitude towards the quote-unquote illness that you are going through because you're not just unlucky and you just haven't, you know, you're not just unlucky and, and, and caught something that now you have to suffer through. This is actually your body and the virus slash bacterial infection helping you to remove crap from your physicality. And quite often it is mirroring energetics, right? Everything happens in the energetic world and then, you know, flows on through to the physical. So when we're going through a purification um, experience uh, physically, it's, we're going to move through it in a much more empowered, quick and comfortable way if we maintain our attention, our attitude on the outcome we're looking to achieve, which is basically the freedom and, and the lightness that comes after having gone through a purification. So looking at it in the big picture, taking the wrongness off what you're experiencing, because, you know, basically when you make yourself wrong, because a lot of people do, right? If they get sick, they make themselves wrong. They start beating themselves up internally for not being stronger, not being healthier, not being whatever, more careful. Wow, I should have rugged up last night. I should have put an extra jersey on. I shouldn't have sat next to that person who was sneezing on the bus. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, whatever it is, right? Robin works in primary school. It's almost impossible to avoid snotty-nosed children because children are still developing their immune system. So it's very easy for them to have acute experiences of these viruses and whatnot because their immune system is not very strong. So you know, the viruses run out of control much more quickly in their bodies and they have to spend a lot more time or should spend ideally a lot more time resting. But we live in a world where resting is not is not um, appropriate. <laughs> it's, it's not appreciated, right? So we try and train our children from very early on that they must soldier on and going to school is important, right? And you, you shouldn't be staying at home and resting just because you've got a virus running out of control in your body, right? Keep going to school because it's really important you learn, otherwise you're going to fall behind, you're not going to get a good enough job and you're going to end up you know, destitute for the rest of your life. So there's this stress put on us right from the word go to become a cog in the machine. And you know, so at the age of seven, we're soldiering on and turning up to school because that's the quote unquote right thing to do as a responsible human. Um, <coughs> Sorry, that was a little rant that just popped out. I'm sure Robin uh, gets it as a disgruntled educator in our system. Um, can't remember what I was saying now. But no, so if you, imagine, if you allow yourself to go through the process of purification in an empowered way and keep your attention on what you're stepping into. Hey, Sister Sanja. Um, keep your attention on what on the outcome of going through this experience, which is no doubt helping you release some toxins that have you know gathered in your body from whatever you know daily life you know experiences that you've had leading up to this moment right now. Then you can relax through the process of releasing your flu symptoms. Not make that's right. I was saying, don't make yourself wrong, right? Don't make yourself wrong because that just lowers your vibration. The last thing you need to do right now is lower your vibration. As your vibration rises, you are going to move through the flu symptoms in a much more empowered way. It might be a little bit more intense, but it'll definitely be more quick. Um, so lifting your vibration is important. So not making wrongnesses, right? The flu is wrong. I'm wrong for getting the flu. The whole situation's wrong. Um, I don't like this. Doesn't help, <laughs> Right? Finding acceptance that, wow, I've allowed my body to get to a state where this is the outcome um, without making that a wrongness. Now, what's the most empowered thing to do right now? Right? Lemon, ginger, and honey, um, resting, keeping warm, um, you know, holding positive attitude, getting a little bit of sunlight that hopefully you have there streaming through a window, so sitting in the sun. Exactly, right? So that's it. That's how to move through uh, cold slash flu in a more empowered way. Hey, Sister Jessica, how are you? Anyone else? What have we got? We've got like four or five minutes left here of chat with Matt. I'm a little bit upbeat. I'm actually more than a little bit upbeat. I am um, riding high <laughs> in, the, 
in the intensity of delivering, just starting to deliver my latest course, uh, the Bright Light Attraction or the Bright Light Client Attraction. I'm still dancing around whether I put client in the, in the title or not. I think I will. I think I will. I think I will. But it might be a subheading. But anyway, the Bright Light Client Attraction program or course uh, is underway. Very, very excited. Uh, more people in that than I anticipated and it's going to be, and it is awesome, right? So I've just delivered the first content over the last couple of days uh, in form of short-ish, <laughs> short-ish videos and an MP3 and some worksheets went out last night or a worksheet this week. And I'm currently working very, very uh, intently on produce. <coughs> oh, there's my throat. I'm producing the content for next week and the week after and trying to stay, I'm intending to get two weeks ahead and stay at least two weeks ahead for the duration of the course. Uh, but at the moment, I am not. <laughs> I'm not. So um, it's giddy up time for Matt to produce the content for the course and to really dance and co-create with the people who are on the course, um, which is exciting, exciting, exciting. And I was talking to um, part of my coaching mentoring team uh, yesterday afternoon about how we're moving forward from here and, and what my next steps are in terms of um, you know evolving this course into something that's ongoing, which I'm very very um, excited about and passionate about. So um, yeah, Matt's Matt's riding high, and plus I did a live light language group session last night, which always leaves me buzzing in the afterglow of the full moon. So that's my life. Um, busy, busy, busy. Um, I've just come through. So over the last two and a half weeks, I basically ran 35 strategy sessions, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, some of them went longer. Let's face it, Matt has a tendency to do that, run longer than he quote unquote uh, intended to. Um, but they were all awesome, right? I didn't have one dud experience of my um, doing 35 strategy sessions with people, resulting in 11 people uh, coming into the uh, of course, a few people, you know, weren't the right fit and a few people obviously or, you know, decided that they wasn't right for them, even though I felt that they probably would benefit from the course. That happens. That happens, you know, and some people it's just out of their price range and some people, you know, are just not there, not ready yet. So, um, so, but the joy was to to tune in to so many different people and um, facilitate a great experience for them because strategy sessions are just awesome, right? Really allowing people to get clear on where they're currently at, where they want to go, and, and what are the basic, you know, what's the basic process for getting through this to get to where you want to go? And, and you know, and if I can play a role in that, Matt Mantara can play a role in that, you know, great. And if not, still valuable uh, experience. It's valuable experience for me too, because getting to know where people are is helping me to co-create products that are going to serve people. So I'm sort of, you know, inputting a range of, you know, where the people who are aligned with me, where the people who are attracted to what I do are in the world and how I can best serve them moving forward over the coming years, right? It's, it's, it's you know, not a short-term thing. I'm not looking for a quick buck here. I'm looking for the long, the long haul. Um, and so I found it incredibly beneficial. It was pretty full-on too <laughs> because I've been busy doing things as well as putting the product together, um, talking to people all the time about it and selling, which has been also... Just looking, my calendar's flashing up at me now. Product creation, product creation. <laughs> I live by technology. Google calendars rules me. No, not quite, but it's an important part of me staying accountable. So obviously I've kicked, yes, it's 9.30. I've gone through my half an hour here and now my calendar's telling me what I'm supposed to be doing next, which is recording a video for uh, week two of the Bright Light Client Attraction Program. Anyway, I can't remember what I was saying, but it was good. Uh, <laughs> no, it's completely gone. So I guess it's time to say goodbye. Uh, and I will speak to you again next week, if not before. What else have I got coming up? Oh, yeah, maybe it is. Is it that week? Just I'm just like, you know, obviously completely out of the loop here. Oh, dear. Anyway, I've done it now. Um, is it our free call this Sunday? No, it's the Sunday after. Okay, awesome. So that's not happening. That's happening in a week and a half will be our free light language 30-minute uh, call. Uh, not this week. 
Not this week, Irene. No, I lost Facebook then. It's okay. Okay, my friends, I will get off this. I'm rambling now and I'm not doing a very good job of saying goodbye. Goodbye, my friends. Namaste. Many, many blessings to you all. Get well soon, Robin. And um, wherever you are in the world, enjoy whatever's going on. Much love to you. Bye for now.